So in this video, we're going to look at money supply, right? Money supply in terms of narrow money, broad money, M1, M2, M3, M4. What does all of these mean? That's what we are going to explore in this video. So we'll introduce two terms called narrow money and broad money, right? So, but before that, we have to define what is money supply, okay? So money supply is defined as the total stock of money in circulation with the public at a particular point in time. I repeat, money supply is defined as the total stock of money in circulation with the public at a particular point in time. Okay, this is known as money supply. The total amount of money with the public in circulation at any point in time. This is money supply. The RBI looks at money supply in four different ways. That is M1, M2, M3, M4. What is M1, M2, M3, M4? This is what we are going to see now. M1 is currency units plus demand deposits, okay, that is currency held by the public in notes and coins plus net demand deposits held by the bank. So, this is M1, M1 is CU plus TD, CU means currency held by the public, notes and coins included and DD means net demand deposits held by the bank. So, whenever we are studying economics, when we hear the term net, net means for example, you have to give 100 rupees to somebody and you have to get 120 rupees from somebody else. That means your net is 120 minus 100. That is what you have to get minus what you have to give. That is 120 minus 100 is equal to 20 rupees. That is going to be your net. So, when, when whenever we say net, it means whatever has to come to you and whatever has to go away from you. We have to subtract these two and whatever is the remaining figure is the net. So, coming back to money supply m1 is equal to cu plus dd that is cu is currency held by the public in terms of notes and coins and dd is net demand deposits held by the bank so we can clearly understand that m1 is a very liquid form of looking at money supply because it is only currency and demand deposits both are available immediately right so m1 is a very liquid form of looking at money supply Next, we will look at M2. M2 is equal to M1 plus saving deposits with post office savings banks. So, earlier post office savings banks were very important because in rural areas, there would not be a lot of banks and post office would take deposits from the villagers and then they would hold it with them. So, all the saving deposits would be held with post office savings banks. So, M2 is looked at as M1 plus saving deposits that is held with post office savings banks that is currency held by the public plus net demand deposits held with the bank plus saving deposits with post office savings banks this will become m2 okay i hope this is clear look at the video once again if you have not understand uh, if you have not understood m1 and m2 now we'll go to m3 m3 is equal to m1 plus net time deposits of commercial banks Okay, net time deposits of commercial banks plus M1 is equal to M3. M1 we already know is CU plus DD. M3 you have to add CU plus DD plus net time deposits of commercial banks. In M1 we only had net demand deposits of commercial banks. In M3 we have net time and demand deposits of commercial banks plus currency that is in circulation with the public. So, M3 is equal to currency held by the public in circulation plus net demand deposits of commercial banks plus net time deposits of commercial banks. I hope the difference is clear. Now, the word net implies that only deposits of the he public held by the banks are to be included in money supply. I repeat, the word net means that only deposits of the public held by the banks are to be included in money supply. The interbank deposits which a commercial bank holds in other commercial banks are not to be regarded as part of money supply. For example, now let's say I go and deposit 1 lakh rupees in a commercial bank in demand deposits. Now, this is looked at as part of money supply. Now, out of this 1000 rupees, if let's say SBI is where I deposited, SBI takes 500 rupees and it deposits in Bank of Baroda, then this cannot be regarded as being part of the money supply because interbank deposits, that is from one bank to another bank, if a bank deposits, that is an interbank deposits. These interbank deposits are not considered 
under money supply only uh, the money that has been invested by the public is looked up on as money supply this is why the word net is used so we say net demand deposits net time deposits interbank deposits are not considered whenever we take net time deposit and net demand deposits only the deposits that have been made by the public is considered whenever we say net demand deposits or net time deposits that is there with the banks okay okay so we have seen m1 m2 m3 now we are going to look at m4 what is m4 m4 is equal to m3 plus total deposit with post office savings organizations excluding national savings certificate okay m3 plus total deposits with post office savings organizations excluding national savings certificate so m4 is equal to currency held by the public plus net demand deposits held by the bank plus net de uh, time deposits held by the bank plus total deposits with post office savings organizations excluding national savings certificate you have to be very clear of the definitions of m1 m2 m3 m4 because in prelims they will ask all these questions and you have to be very clear what constitutes which m1 m2 m3 m4 right so please mug up these definitions also now m1 and m2 are known as narrow money m3 and m4 are known as broad money right so m1 and m2 are known as narrow money m3 and m4 are known as broad money now the most commonly used measure of monetary supply is m3 m3 is the most commonly used measure of monetary supply that is currency held by the public plus net demand and time deposits held by the commercial banks this is the most commonly used measure of monetary supply now we know that m1 is the most liquid form of money supply that we are measuring right because it is just currency and demand deposits now if you look at m4 m4 is the least liquid of all of these m1 m2 m3 m4 it is also known as aggregate monetary resources m4 is also known as aggregate monetary resources m4 is the least liquid of them m4 includes m3 plus deposits in post office saving organization excluding national saving certificate this is known as aggregate monetary resources and out of m1 m2 m3 m4 m4 is the least liquid of them all so this is about measuring money supply and the different terms that is used in the indian economy and the ones that are used by the rbi m1 m2 m3 m4 remember these points m1 is the most liquid of all monetary monetary supply uh, parameters m3 is the most commonly used measure of monetary supply m4 is the least liquid of all of them and it is also known as aggregate monetary resources if you were to compare m1 m2 m3 m4 and then m4 will always have the highest value okay so this concludes this video watch the video multiple times to understand the terms and what composes each of the terms right thank you